Now that we have our empty score, it's time to start putting in some notes. Before I start orchestrating this, I want to hear what it sounds like on a piano. But I'm not very good at playing piano, so I'll get Sibelius to play it for me. I could just write it out as it is, as it appears here, in this one piano step. But that would be quite difficult, especially seeing these two notes together. And it's not very useful later on when we start orchestrating. So I'll put each different line of melody into a different stave. I see that there are two lines at the bottom. And there are also two lines at the top. So I'll need four staves. I'll add another piano. I for instrument. And I'll go and find my piano again. Piano is added in, and I click OK. There are a few different ways to input notes, but all of them rely on first choosing a rhythm and then putting in the pitch. The mouse is probably the easiest way, but it also is, takes the longest and can be the most frustrating because you have to be so precise with the mouse. I'm just going to change these back to quavers like they should be. That's a little bug that Sibelius has. So I'll start with my first melody here and I'll use the mouse to show you how it works. With nothing selected, I'll click on quaver and then I need a D. So I'll take this note place it as a D. Notice that we can also hear the sound as it goes. This blue line here tells me where the next note will be. So I'll choose the quaver again. Well, it's already chosen, so I can leave it selected and choose the B flat. Then I'll choose the G, but I've placed it in the wrong place. So I'll backspace and put it in the right place. Now I need a crotchet G, so I'll select crotchet and put the G up there. Now I need a tied over to a quaver G, so I'll select tie, quaver, and a G. The system goes quite slowly, so let's try this with the keyboard. Carrying on from there, I now want an E natural. You'll notice that this keypad is identical to the number pad on your keyboard. So when I press the buttons on the key on the number pad, it selects them on the keypad. So I want to keep the quaver. In this case, that is three on the number pad. Then I want a natural for my E. Natural is up here, so it's number 7. I press 7 and then I press an E on the keyboard. Now I need an F sharp, it's still a quaver, and quaver is still selected. So I need a sharp is 8 and then an F on the keyboard. Quaver is still selected, now I need a G. And I can go through this quite quickly since these are all quavers. A. Flat is 9, then E. Still quaver. D. C. Tie is enter on the number pad. C again. A. B. D. There's our first line in the treble clef. I'll press escape so that I can select things. As you can see, if I tried to select one of these notes now, I would replace it with the note where the mouse is. I'll use undo, control Z. Control Z is your friend. And I'll press escape to get rid of the blue mouse. Now I want to put in the bottom line. First we need some rests in there. So I'll take, I'll select where it must start, because that rest is correct. 
I'll click on that rest, choose the rhythm of the rest, which is a crotchet, on the keypad that's four, and rest is over here, zero on the number pad. So I'll press zero, and we can see we're ready to start writing the next one. Now it's a quaver rest, so I'll select quaver and rest. Now I need a D. Still a quaver, so I'll just press D on the keyboard. But it's the wrong D. I need the D an octave up. So I'll press Control and Up arrow. That takes it an octave up. Similarly, I could use Control and Down to take it an octave down. I'll leave it up there since those are the notes that I want. Now the C, it's still a quaver. Now I need a rest and zero, a crotchet rest, another crotchet rest, a crotchet A, and a crotchet G, and G. And again, Sibelius chooses the closest note to the previous one, and when it should be an octave lower. So I'll select that an octave lower. Control down. Let's speed this up from here, shall we? You'll see that at this point I've run out of space to put in the notes. I've come to the last bar. To add bars, I'll make this bigger so that you can see, in the Home tab I can go to the Bars section and Add. If I simply click, it will add one at the end. Or I can add multiple bars. The shortcut for this is Control b that adds bars at the end. If I wanted to add bars somewhere in the middle, I could click on the bar that I've, select the bar that I want to add it next to and use Control, Shift and B. That adds a bar in between two bars. That should be enough bars for now. As you can see, dragging, dragging a window in Windows to the left makes it take up half the screen, which can be quite useful in instances like this. Here are some semiquavers that we see for the first time. finished inputting all the notes in the first section into the different staves so that each note is so that there's only one note in each stave there's still none of the detail like the slurs dynamics staccato any any expression markers but i can at least get a feel for how this piece sounds with the notes that it uses to play back what I've written in, I'll make sure nothing is selected using Escape. I'll press it twice just to be sure. And then I'll press P for play. You can follow along with the green line, which is the playback line.
spacebar stops the playback. Perhaps I wanted to just check a couple of things, especially in this bar where there are some weird accidentals. I could just play that bar by selecting the first note or the bar line and then pressing P to play just from that section. And spacebar for stop. If I wanted to just listen to how the two treble lines over here interact, I can select them, selecting that bar, and control to select the other bar, control and click, and then P will just play those lines. And spacebar for stop.